<sighs> Swiftly and speedily, where was I before I lost my bearings? I don't really like that I'm lost now. What are you to me, O oh, Tyre and Sidon and all the religions, regions, there could be religions too, of Philistia? Are you paying me for something? If you are paying me back, I will return your payment on your head swiftly and speedily. Oh, that's where we lost ended off. For you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried my rich treasures into your temples. You have sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks in order to remove them far from their own border. Behold, I will stir them up from the place to which you have sold them, and I will return your payment on your own head. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Judah, and they will sell them to the Sabians, to a nation far away, for the Lord has a spoken. Proclaim this among the nations. Consecrate for war. Yeah, this is little 10 now. The Hebrews are still out here in these streets. That's what's good. Because they have not trusted upon their Messiah. We're the ones in heaven. Proclaim this among the nations. Consecrate for war. Stir up the mighty men. Let the men, let all the men of war draw near. So this is God basically, you know, it's written in God's word that um, the Lord has set apart everything for his purposes, including the wicked for the day of trouble. And even the strategy of the devil is behind the scenes, really, frankly, the strategy of God. So the battle of Armageddon, the value of decision thing that happens, the 200 million man strong army that comes up against the God of the universe. Frankly, God is the one that fulfills that through the devil who is going to insist on hoping to get away with a murder he frankly cannot get away with. It is why... The devil got Christ killed. He thought that that was like the finishing result thing that he's going to finally do. However, that was the very act that judged the devil as he was promised to be judged, that he will be crushed on his head while he will strike the heel of the man. It happened at the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise and we celebrate the fulfillment of Bible prophecy through someone who thinks they can thwart it. So the battle of Armageddon is a desire to thwart prophecy, but an actual fulfillment. So God is the one that charges all those kings of the East to actually rise up to the value of decision to try and take on the most high. Okay. Let them come up. Let, let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am a warrior. So that's the level of bravado. We're like bashing like King Kong on a mountaintop on one's chest. Yeah, Tarzanic endeavors watching out for the a tree type insanity of the Earth's citizenship. They're all going to think they can come up against God. Mm. Okay, so let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I'm a warrior. Oh, look at you go. All right. Hasten and come, all you surrounding nations, and gather yourselves there. Proper, the Lord is the one that sends out the charge, and yet the wicked are going to be thinking they're coming up against the spaceship in the sky called the second coming. Okay, righto. Hasten and come, all you surrounding nations, and gather yourselves there. Bring down your warriors, O Lord. Let the nations stir themselves up and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Otherwise known as the valley of decision in certain other parts of uh, uh, certain other translations. Okay. Put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. So Matthew 24 paralleled where it is that the angels of God gather across the four uh, corners of the earth, the elect of God. And then they get caught up at the second coming while we also return. Then that Joel 2 scenario and unfolds like dropping like dominoes. Booyah. Okay. Put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Us. And then again, Joel 2. Parallel that. Go in. Long story short. Bazaloni bam. That I've prepared for battle. And on this day, your fingers for war have I trained them. Trod these monsters underfoot. Show them right now. The flames that they try to show you. Okay. Put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Go in. Tread for the wine press is full. Indeed. The vats overflow for their evil is great. Multitudes. Multitudes in the valley of decision. There is the word. For the day of the Lord is near. In the valley of a decision. The sun and the moon are darkened. Again, Matthew 24 uh, paralleled. You know, also Luke 21. Also Revelation 6. Like so many places where the sun being darkened. We also read from, is it um, 
Isaiah uh, 24, you know, the darkening of the, 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 the sun, moon, and sackcloth, etc. Mm, yo, this is just like, what, but goosebumps much, right? I hope you're getting goosebumps. All right, multitudes in the value of decision for the day of the Lord is near. In the value of decision, the sun and the moon are darkened and the stars withdraw their shining. So many parallels. The Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth quake. But the Lord is, is a refuge for to his people. A stronghold to the people of Israel. That's the second coming, like right there. Y'all, you be out in these streets playing. Lalaring. Like inget. Mm. No matter what people do, bottom line is against the king of the universe, Aghambegi, guys. Aghambegi, like proper. You cannot come up against God. You cannot come up against the king of the universe and think that you i don't know have arrived because it appears as if though his saints his disciples his churn down here in these streets are abandoned he made it clear that he will never leave nor forsake us so when we appear forsaken it is your judgment i can't say that enough when christians look as if though bashi wait no god is basically just doing something else over here that is a a cloak a smoke screen of what people are of what's actually going on he blinds people he speaks in metaphors and parables that those that are with a hardened state a hardened heart may not believe for he has chosen ugarabo salvation is of the lord he has chosen jacob i have loved esau i have hated like proper repent lest you should be shut out of the kingdom of heaven it is literally that incredibly basic but ukdelela is like a whole total thing like delarizationing like the the 90s outfit that needs to stop mm, then in a proper disrespect gotta put that out the window otherwise god is gonna send you re -S -P -C -E -C -T, find out what it means to me i came today to give myself to give myself comfort against the sorrow that slapped me the suicide that harassed me tried to strangle me put a noose around my neck and also the myriad of incredible fetishistic nightmares that i got last night hinting and to me ending up uh, listen to me speak from the abundance of my heart the mouth speaks from my belly flows rivers of living water and i'm expected to settle for some carnal rando in the world that also is a married man just fetishistic desires because a woman is suffering literally too much and so you imagine now on that street on that day i'm going to be content mm with being a mistress when i have a god who will never leave nor forsake me within minutes of my mother acting a fool she tried to get the she she offered me dermatological services and i'm like i'm sorry i belong to the king of the universe who can arrest into your mundo that's doing a, a strange thing can arrest the heart of a person doing a strange thing yet you rolling around with occult magic when god is the one that orders the battle of armageddon even though it looks as though it's the devil he's the one that ordered like judas to betray him even though it looked as though it was the work of the devil he is that sovereign and you think that i look upon the wicked that has been that have been set apart for the day of my trouble and i fret and i front and i freak out and i shake literally my knees wobbling around making like a little ducky why would i do that when the lord has set apart everything for its purposes including the wicked for the day of trouble my persecution has been set apart by a sovereign god that i might conquer on the other side and so tell of his glory i was bombarded last night by nightmare after nightmare after nightmare literally in one night i i woke up so broken so sorrowful so devastated of insistences against my life despite me thinking i'm actually in these streets conquering mm. you know when you fight the war and you think you've really fought when you have prayed so hard all night long that your voice is sore when you have fasted for an entire two months non-stop with just a break grand shop of just five days in the middle like i have had two one month long fasts over the past indeed two months and in the middle of both fasts there was only five days when you have fasted and prayed gabi over that conquered certain strongholds and then you dream about being a mistress to some charlatan dream about being a second wife to some rando that be out in these streets calling you rachel because you would like to believe that he's jacob mm. dream about being bathsheba because brother be calling himself david mm. giving himself a biblical name so that he can get away with i don't know polygamy and random uh, affliction of, of women's rights that's what's good yeah calling yourself solomon you know a man with a weakness for them ladies but hey guess what god gave you wisdom he still loves you he cares for you even though your life ends up like no brainerd and nonetheless you get to get away with like a whole bunch of murder because you built a temple okay i am a christian and be in god's eyes there is neither male nor female jew nor greek mm. and so the prayers of um i don't know a righteous man availed much also applies to me 
As a woman, the Lord regards what I prefer. He gave me John 10 just as he gave men John 10. The sheep came, no, the, 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 not sheep, sorry, what do they call this guy? Thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ has given me life and life abundantly. I inherit that just as any other man does. He gave me John 15 and said, ask anything you will receive. And he gave me Matthew 7 and said, ask and you shall receive proper. I was told I get to pray and get what I want. So no random misogynistic no-brainer that proper archer in these streets cannot stand women gets to come upon realizing that frankly he married wrong the first time i don't care that waking up of yours is rather rapacious you are enduring unfortunate first wives to the tyranny of your greed later on now that you want the fresh spiky little feisty thing speaking out crying on social media abused by her family if anything your wives there isn't even anything wrong with them you are the issue you as men and when i say no but father i don't want any such rando in my backyard my oh my how they come knocking and i'm like no god do something and the Lord is like, God, you're my Sarah. I will handle Abimelech and Pharaoh on your behalf. I will plague these men for holding on to you. They will finally let you go and then cry out to Abraham and say, Abraham, why did you not tell me this woman was your wife? Acting as if though they were not greedy kings already with a whole bunch of concubines. I'm not marrying a filthy man. It's not happening. You know, Ukbege Zalanukhotlela is such a dangerous persistence in the black community they love saying to women just hold on girl allegedly apparently there's such few men out there that you gotta be content with being baby mama number seven and wife number three because they're so hard to come by these boys no i'm sorry i'm not doing it literally just as with the law of um the normal distribution sorry there are more or less 50 percent of men on earth as there are 50 percent of women give or take in any given era there might be maybe 47 percent of women versus men or give or take at any given era perhaps maybe 47 percent of men in compared sorry yeah of uh, like 59 percent of men while there are like 40 something percent of women yes men do die sooner for what reason can nobody understand i guess they're that irresponsible and so for those reasons i don't know god just kind of like you know severs them from the earth but half and half tends to have been a general trend if you were to grab all the men and the women all throughout history 50 50 god made them male and female there are half women in this world as there are men the earth's population is made up of more or less 50 50 percent of men and women therefore one man for one woman that's what's good that's how the lord intended it so this rapacity in grabbing wives upon wives upon wives as one dude like proper you grab these naive ladies that are happy to go and grab their womb that's never given birth to a baby and put baby number five in their womb of yours while it's their first one that's their thing that they're doing i however am bigger wiser than that i've been and, I don't know, enlightened by the Holy Spirit, I recognize the normal distribution favors me and tells me that indeed, for one man, there is one woman. And so therefore, I'm waiting for the one dude that sees me as the one woman that he waited for, that I also in turn waited for. I am bespoke to my husband, specially tailor-made just for him. And I will not bow down to a Jacob. I will not bow down to a, what do you call this thing? This Oki. To a David that goes and grabs Bathsheba by fire by force because I know he can. I am not going to bow down to an Abraham that's content to lay with Hagar because Sarah is kind of crazy for a season. I'm not going to bow down to a man that is not Isaac. Do you understand? Because I'm Rebecca. I'm not doing it. I am not doing it because as a woman, I get to pray just as much as Jesus Christ enabled men to pray and get answered prayer. If anything, men, when they don't listen to women, are the ones that get hindered prayer and stuff. I've done my part. I've waited on the Lord ever since the age of 26. I'm not about to allow some dude to fertilize my eggs after he has fertilized the eggs of many different women's wombs. I will not be a stepmom of seven children that I frankly did not give birth to. I am not doing it. Not because I don't love kids. Everybody knows I do. I've got a history of literally loving a whole bunch of them in a crash-like circumstance. It is not my love for kids. It is the irresponsibility of men that I just will not take in my stride. I am nobody's second wife. I am nobody's second wife. My ex-boyfriend, for instance, wants me back. And I'm like, I'm sorry, brother, you had a shot to have me the first time around. I had like a whole 50-part series where I spoke about this particular pandemic. I will not get the disease. It's not happening. Mm. How in the world do you go and marry the side chick? The woman that wreaked havoc in my relationship with you when we were together. And then you marry her as a first wife, making me look like a placeholder? Making a proper... Are you for real? And I'm I'm sorry, brother. If you're not happy with that woman, sister girl, that's happy, that's content to roam these streets in a polygamous like uh, like relationship. Uh, go and find yourself in a, a true Rachel. Basically a woman that is content to be the second wife of a man. Last time I checked, Rachel was living in an era where frankly women didn't really have much of a choice. And if you don't get married um, early, 
Basically, your spinsterhood would render you a, uh, you know, done woman, a finished woman. It's the 21st century and now 39 year old women get to, do you understand? Be like, no, I'm not doing it. Nobody is going to impoverish me and then put me in the life of a no brainer man. No brainer man. I will not enter into an arranged marriage. Just because I need to eat? Just because my mother's getting old? Just because my life sucks? Herein lies the deal. If my mother gets old and dies, that's what happens with my mother. But as for me, I belong to Jesus. And I'm going to get to live out a full life if, if, at, if at all he does not rapture the church as in day before yesterday. I, however, believe that the rapture is going to happen first. He's not going to let my mom get to a point of dropping into a casket. And now all of a sudden some random dude to whom I am wife number three because he thinks his name is Liz Tyler then rock up and marry me. I'm not doing it. Like I am proper not doing it. The folly of Solomon was an abomination to the Lord it is clear so too was the folly of David with Bathsheba even though these men might have been embraced by God loved by him he did not embrace their ways with women I therefore get to pray to not be a Sarah I get to pray to not be a Rachel I even get to pray to not be a Hannah Hannah didn't complain about being a second wife or wife number two or another wife in a two-wife union but she got given so much grief by Panina because she couldn't have a baby. A jealous like random female made her life hard to a point where Elkanah was like, oh my goodness, baby. But like, why under heaven aren't you satisfied with me? Because I don't have a kid and this woman keeps giving me grief. I don't want grief. I don't want no baby mama drama. I don't want my husband getting called in the wee hours of the morning because a woman is using the trend that she has with my husband as an excuse to ransack my marriage. I'm not doing it because I waited ever since the age of 26. And so people who are irresponsible with their romantic decisions, do you and go find yourself another willing Rachel. I am not a willing Rachel. All I am is a Rebecca. All I am is a Rebecca. And Isaac and Rebecca had Jacob and Esau. Do you know of any other kids in that union? No, just the twins. I'm not doing it. So the bombardment by this monolithic strong man in South Africa. Dude, frankly, that is scraps at this point. Yeah, no, I'm above it. I get to conquer. Serpents and scorpions, I trample them underfoot. It's what I'm about, aren't you, in these streets? We're not doing it. I am not going to be a glorious woman that was passed up by foolish men in their youth that now want to rock up in their middle age and take a woman that does not belong to them. Y'all all passed me up. My ex passed me up. The dude who went and married another woman passed me up. So many dudes passed me up. Why? I literally cannot explain it. Right At this point, I think it was spiritual war. Maybe it was because I was dark in complexion, but proper, whatever. Colorism? Isn't that ancient already? Like, isn't that like a stupid reason anymore? I don't know. I have no idea why men passed me up other than spiritual. Because I don't know. South Africa is in this whole poly polygamistic, insa polygamistic insanity. all over the show. The nightmares I keep on getting. There's this one chick back in the day that I used to know. She was at that time perhaps like 24. Not even perhaps. She was exactly 24 years old. She entered into an affair with a married man who had a wife that could not give him babies. And this chick decided to go and give this dude a child. He became so abusive. I'm like, girl, you are single. She was the secretary. The, 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 the what do you call this thing? The PA of this dude. I was like, how in the world are you going to be so fly as a 24 year old i don't get it and then go and give some geriatric proper that could not put a baby in his wife womb a wife let them go and adopt if at all the dude wants a baby but if he wants to be biological let him go and negotiate with some female that's happy to enter into a customary marriage and give him a baby i don't know but why does it have to be you i keep dreaming about being that cheeky proper go and give a man a baby with the wife not knowing because he's trying to one put a tattoo in my body mark it like i'm some animal that he gets to like urinate on and mark his territory and secondly i get to be the mistress the side piece after walking in so much dignity the word of God coursing through my veins like this. Bread of life, literally, I am ever satiated. Never do I ever hunger. I've made the right choice. I've arrived, essentially. I'm not even unroot anymore. The bane of the existence of some unfortunate female that is looking at a husband that no longer gazes upon her with any level of splendor because he's greedily salivating after me. A husband that used to cherish this woman and now he doesn't anymore because he's seen Karabo and he thinks Karabo is better. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be the thorn in your wife's flesh the wife of it of which has not seen that has not literally had this coming all that happened is that you got tired of her you got exhausted because you're greedy you kept on perusing the internet co coveting other women until you thought your wife was boring what you are is like andre in being mary jane wreaking havoc in avery's life even though the woman ain't never
never done anything wrong. I'm not going to be Mary Jane. I'm not doing it. And he's obi na mina. A woman that causes a man to leave. The modern glorification of side pieces, I frankly don't get it. The modern glorification of women who steal husbands, I literally am not of any understanding as to what's going on over there. I'm a child of God. We don't do it, okay? I'm not going to pride myself in hurting other women even though they've hurt me. I mean, look at how the earth glorified what under heaven Angelina Jolie did to Jennifer Aniston. What? Okay? Look at what under heaven the world did in glorifying what a Gabrielle Union did to Dwayne Wade's wife. Everybody be out in these streets talking about Gabrielle Union being the wife. No, she is an adulteress. Do you understand? The wife Ule move. And now the man is wreaking hell or causing his boy child to become a girl. And don't nobody know what's going on. Because that is what side piece does. Does not really care for its own baby. I'm not doing it. I said one higher. So of course, yeah, now she can allow a teenager boy to transition aside to be next. That's what's going on. But the mother is crying, lamenting, complaining. And only a few people on her on, uh, on her side because she does not have the splendor and the spunk and the whatever of Gabrielle Union. She's not as fly. Despite Gabrielle Union being several years older than that woman, she nonetheless looks much better than her. And so for those reasons, that's enough. In the same way that uh, um, Angelina Jolie was such a striking beauty, such such sharp features in comparison to Jennifer Aniston, such that everybody just like forgot about Jennifer Aniston. What? He hurt her. He and she hurt her. And so the world should ever gaze upon uh, who's this uh, Angelina Jolie as an illegitimate. Whatever it is that they were doing was an adulterous affair, never at all was it an actual marriage at all, recognized in the sight of God. These men get rapacious, they get greedy, they meet women with striking features, blue eyes, long eyelashes, they meet women with massive power because of lip injections and Botox. They meet women with buttocks that aren't even theirs, shapes that don't make sense at all for a human being because they're in proportion, but they've removed their bottom ribs. They go for these women as salivatingly as they go after them panting like doggies. And then they cause the, the regular women that are their wives to feel like they ain't Jack. God says that you must ever enjoy the breasts of the wife of your youth, which is the reason why you, you ought to choose right from the get-go. Some of these dudes did actually choose right. They were actually in love, but now they want something fresh. Usirasi, I'm sorry. You don't get to consider your wife a worn-out garment. Like you better re-energize that relationship, light up the spa, go and on a holiday for crying out loud, leave the kids with the auntie and go to a bed and breakfast, but do not knock on my door and say I'm sick and tired of this penina. You don't get to call a woman Vashti when there's actually nothing wrong with them. It's just rapacity. I will not have a man badmouth his woman just so he can be in my life. That's what these dudes do. They start speaking smack about their wives when they've done absolutely nothing wrong. Marawana as a mistress, you be out here thinking you're rescuing this bugger. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I just ain't. No, it's literally not happening. Mm -mm, mm -mm. If then I don't do this, I'm threatened with destitution indefinitely. Mm. Mm. Because a bunch of zoo animals have seen it fit to escape their cages and encircle my ecosystem. Herein lies the deal. I've given my life to the second Adam. His name is Jesus. And he's the one that gives a dominion to human beings in order to run and rule over animals. So if you want to be like zoo animals, I will have a dominion over you. Given that you do not want to be like a whole human being. Granted that I've given my life to the second Adam. The Lord miraculously enables the way of believers. Puman Gid. Whatever strategy you're trying to proliferate, I'm not about that business. I'm not about to go and praise a man, scratching his rando itching ears, making him feel all good while he's bad mouthing his ex wife. I'm not doing it. I am not doing it. I already made a mistake of that nature, by the way, with the American guy. He had two ex wives, and my oh my, how he had nothing good to say about them. Eh, hey, hey. should have known red flags fla flailing. However, I was sad, you know, broken, devastated. And so, for those reasons, I accommodated a rando. It's not happening again. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I am not about to go and be a homewrecker. Angizo tatela indotana, indotagazi, inkosigazi, indotayayo. I'm not taking any man from any woman. So any man that desires to be taken, filangati buya la pume kona grandshop, you are loitering, you are trespassing in my jarata, and you are not welcome. And since you're in my jarata, I mean, petty bamuge boy boy, and ang sabuzu sebenzis, angisabi uguzi sebenzis apuma, upele, angizingeni. Mine is a womb that gets fertilized by the man that the Lord has set apart for me, to whom I am and bespoke. You, on the other hand, are a loitara. You, on the other hand, like I said, a trespasser. You, on the other hand, are in dire need of having, like, a bullet unleashed into your brain, because you're in my yard, and you're scary at night. You look like a phantom, a ghost, and since it is so dark and eerie, I'm just gonna shoot a bullet into the sky, wherever it is that you're at, and find out in the morning that it was actually a human being. It was actually a human being. Clearly, Junior, guys. I am going to handle you. 
I said no. But get persist. And because of the persistence out here in these streets, I am literally dying, suffocating. I'm a fuzzy hope that the day is going to arrive when my body is getting rammed into by some dude I didn't sign up for, like in an arranged marriage. On my wedding night, when I sought glory, joy, kikupile mora na jeson na for le tabole ling lexa de talo kanye galenyan. Another go tabajwang, kile mo hara arranged marriage. Can you bring back lost lover? Nah. Can you a dude? Proper. That decided to go and wreak havoc in our relationship. We broke up and now 12 years later, he gets to rock up and marry me because he so ransacked all the other men that I could ever meet. And so, come then. Ilya, another only one that has ever treated me well. Hi there, buddy. Ex-boyfriend. I'm using it. I'm spice You messed up. You had your shot. You laid your bed. Lay in it. Don't apologize. You ain't sorry. You only sorry you got caught. Is that basic? Puman gim. But if you don't wanna, it's fine. Jesus Christ will take me home. The Lord will take us home. And no, not through suicide, because we're not doing it. I did say, if y'all want me dead, rock up, unleash a bullet in my skull. Since I'm seeing phantoms in my backyard, let it, let it be a duel, a trial by ordeal, where somebody gotta die. And if it's me, then whatever. To live is Christ, but to die is gain. Otherwise, yo win amina. I am not barging. I am spice kele me sa leza zelinja lezinja lezi. La em kai kwenye in South Africa. Ha ko na zama yake lo tumpa boka muso baka kau felanga rege nandi pa. I'm sorry, kita li feel. Not only that, kina li mora na je. So I've got wisdom. Nandi pa smart, just as I'm smart, but she lacks wisdom. Fool for days. Now she's about to spend the rest of her life in prison over some dude with Jesus saying, "Hi there, buddy. Not me. I am not doing it. I will say this once and forever more." I am not the baby mama of some dude that has impregnated anybody else in history. I will not be with a man that's ever been married before. I am not doing it. And whoever tries to lie to me, I dare you to rock up in the life of a woman who's got a spiritual gift from here to Timbuktu, seize the veil of what people are doing in the occult and imagine that you who rock up with a silly agenda are not going to get busted in my dreams. I will see your wife. I will see your girlfriend. I will see even the side piece you had in 1994. That's just how poignant my spiritual gifting is. Okay, nobody lie. Retreat. Like an army that was way in over its head, trying to coup or occupy a land with way too many soldiers. Those who are with me are more numerous than those who are with you. Fall back, men. Fall back. All these irresponsible women that are letting me die. But God will give me glory, grace somehow. But fall back. Do not look at my life, my conditions, my situation and anticipate that I cannot do so. I am married to Jesus. Grandchild, that's what this ring is about. In the inside, it is inscribed wait to Christ. I got a savior. I don't need a man to come and rescue me. A dude that's going to undermine my vow of chastity. Or even the fact that I don't want to kiss before I'm married. Like Pumangim. All y'all with your crotches burning. With like lust all up in your grill. Mama, what gets it? The coals on your crotch. But you're not even standing to try and like, you know, empty yourselves. You're not even standing trying to like light out the fire. The Bible says that if anything causes you to sin, God will cut it off proper. Sever whatever makes you stumble. So if I make you stumble, get out of my ministry. I did make it clear that I am not here to preach to men, but to women. Because that's who the Lord has led me to reach in sobriety. So if you're a man salivating outside of my ministry with no sobriety, literally trying to leave your woman, singing me, give me one reason to stay here. No, I won't give you one hamba. Boom. Go with you who can't even sing like Desiree. Go. Mm -mm. Wabimba. So in closing, this is what I believe is going to happen. Okay. Kara was going to perpetually stay neglected by a bunch of rando naive individuals. Following which they will learn that they either Laodicea, Sardis, Thyatira, Ephesus, or Pergamum. Having reduce me to the Smyrnian church and so therefore given me a Philadelphian exit and once that's the thing they're gonna be like oh snap who'd have thunk it rapture happened and then they will repent like Peter strengthen their brothers then get hung upside down on a cross except instead of getting hung upside down on a cross they will get beheaded because they're in the tribulation they will then come rejoice as be jubilant in heaven after being martyred be like but like why was I martyred and then get given white robes following which after the number of all of their brethren have been collected we then come back with Jesus, ransack the earth, start afresh, then I'll marry my husband. That's what I believe is going to happen. I'm not going to get help, but it's okay. Whoever will listen to me on this side is great. And so far as I clear my skin, because I'm quite frankly annoyed with all the acne on it, I'm content. And so far as I've got soup in my bowl because it's winter, Gabanda, I'm good. And so far as the shower water keeps on falling and bluting my body, I am excellent. In so far as internet keeps running and I get to see what's happening on the planet, I'm good. In so far as I've got my Bible and I can continue to study, in so far as I'm still beating my flesh into submission, successfully fasting, ransacking the occult, in so far as I can keep on doing these things, I'm going to be alright until the Lord comes and grabs a sister. Yes. 
because y'all still gonna make like Ananias and Sapphira and act as if though you are not hiding whatever you're supposed to give to God from God. Like cease and desist. Can't nobody move out here in these streets because I'm sorry. Let my beauty then be given to heaven because frankly that's where it belongs anyway. And then my husband will be sober with no issues, no qualms with me. He will also have no random insidious agenda trying to stealthily worm his way into the life of a woman he doesn't deserve because he just like me will have waited. However, unfortunately either died from what the Lord showed me he's a dude that died long ago mm -hmm. or he could not quite get the wife that he asked the Lord for even though he lived well into his middle age which I doubt because the Lord showed me my husband died as a kid yes he will be among the dead in Christ that rise first then I'll be caught up in the sky meet him and be like oh you're so cute and then we'll be friends really nice ones throughout the millennial reign and then I'm going to get that like bashing wedding that's good that's what's good y'all go coming to America ooh coming to America yeah Lisa Lee Hakim like literally a kingdom marriage where the whole country the whole planet is celebrating it that's what's gonna happen might be speculative but, but I don't care whether or not I'm being speculative at this point because that little pie in the sky dream is gonna keep me safe from a charlatan rocking up on some I love you my baby my first wife was Leah I'm sorry no I'm not Rachel I am Rebecca bye some people might watch my content and be like this girl is so contentious she's so angry all the time I feel as if though there's no gentleness she's like a loud gong and a clanging cymbal yeah I did tell you I'm really suffering with being like the church at Ephesus walking away from my first love because I'm so angry all the time God, however, has mercy on that because he understands that I'm being pushed to a corner literally every single time. And so therefore, grace abounds where sin is abounding in my particular case because I'm not taking for granted the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. If I lack gentleness, it is only because I've been squeezed in a corner by attrition for a good decade. And so therefore, I lack gentleness. I'm feisty, backbitey, and I speak with fangs in my mouth growing at an ever sharper rate precisely because people won't leave me alone. I was a sweet little coy girl once upon a time. I was the shy, I was the quiet, shy type, like squire for hire, until everybody decided to make out of me a pinata. Then I got all grizzly. That's what's good. And like a mama bear, now I am a rogue. That's what's happened. So uh, if I'm gentle, not. If I lack it, this is where grace abounds. My cases like mine are examples of how God cov covers Christians with grace. It's not you over there attending Grace Bible Church, cohabiting with your boyfriend, uncomfortable about what you're doing, but nonetheless continuing with all different kinds of warning signs being flailed by the Lord in the sky for you to stop and then you don't. Grace doesn't abound on you. It abounds on people like me who because of being severely dehydrated, parched of affection and perpetually squeezed in a corner hoping that they're going to do something that they don't want to do, then go on right ahead to in their anger actually sin, letting the sun go down on their wrath. People who are under so much attack, so much attrition, so much abuse, so much persecution that it's really hard to stay holy. Grace abounds in the lives of people like me because that's where the body of death is having a field day with you. You want to do better but you just can't stop hurting her and and so therefore, every so often she thinks a mean thought about you. That's where grace abounds. Reduce my persecution. And if at all I still continue to walk in this like feisty disposition, then I am without excuse. But right now, gentleness has fled out the window. And indeed, I sound like a loud gong or a clanging cymbal because you have put me in a position to be Ephesian as opposed to Smyrnian or even Philadelphian. You are messing with my, I don't know, like thing that I'm doing here with Jesus. And I pray every day for God to have mercy on me, to keep me calm, sober, that I might not find myself left behind after already suffering through all this and then be embarrassed in the midst of people that frankly all these years I was never embarrassed even though they hoped I would get to a point where I'm like oh, look at me I'm a loser now I'm not a loser I'm the biggest and baddest winner out here in these streets because God is with me therefore no one can be against me so have mercy on my lack of gentleness the decorum fled because you kept persecuting bye